so um all right uh welcome back to this video welcome back to this channel so uh i really hope that you have you know gone through the last video or the last lecture right where i taught you about you know the basics uh, where i taught you the basics of uh, deep learning or the introduction the basic introduction to artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning and you have also learned about some of the applications or uh, some of the applications of deep learning and artificial intelligence so in this video i'll try to you know i'll try to divide this video this this video is going to be a long video uh, just for uh, just for information purpose right so yeah so this video is going to be a little long long video a little longer video but you know i'll try to cover as much as possible um you know i've divided this video into different sections so these are the different sections uh, that i have you know divided this video and i'll also be using uh, this this tool called uh, uh, online whiteboard so i uh, just just uh, i know uh, my, my handwriting is not so good even paper but i'll try to you know improve my handwriting like uh, make sure that you can understand uh, my handwriting so yeah i divided this video into like six sections right so the first section is we will be trying to understand you know what is the difference between you know using uh, deep learning to solve a problem and programming to solve a problem right and then we are going to talk about the types of deep learning right so, so there are uh, further two types of deep learning algorithms and then we'll be tr trying to talk about you know training versus test data and training versus test process what is this training period how can we train the model what is mean by training the model uh, you know what happens in training the model and then we'll be looking what is testing the model and then we'll be looking at the structure of a neuron what is a neuron so right i you might you might hear me say deep learning is a study of building you know neural networks right so that is a formal definition of deep learning so we will we'll, before trying to learn about deep learning deep neural networks uh, in the future videos we'll just try to understand what is a neuron first and then after that uh, we'll learn about the steps of training what happens in training and then finally uh, the optimization optimization algorithms that are you know uh, that are used in deep neural networks right so good right so first let's start with deep learning versus programming uh, let's just take a use case i'll just zoom in this is a very good tool like for teaching so yeah good uh, so first let's discuss the difference between deep learning this reduces size good so let's discuss the difference between deep learning versus I'll say PR. I can't write the whole sentences. Okay, so uh, we are going to discuss deep learning as programming. Just a formal title there. Um, like, so, so what is deep learning? So let's say we want to solve a problem. Let's just take a, a simple problem. Let's say we have uh, the inputs. I'll say the inputs and the outputs. So maybe we'll take in the. Uh, let's say let's just think about a problem. Let's say we you just taking the area of a house, maybe just the area of a house, and then output the um, price of the house, right? I'll just draw a symbol, right? So from at the area of the house, you maybe you want to you want a program to take in the area of a house and predict the price of a house. Very simple problem, right? So uh, if you want to solve this problem using a programming, right? Using the traditional programming. You want to build a, build a program, right? Or, or what you what you do input to the computer? So this is think of this as a computer, right? You input um the computer, the inputs, and the rules, right? Uh, so for for this prop for for the sake of this problem, maybe you will create a formula, right? For, or the relation between this um. Or the relation between this uh, price, uh, or the relation between the area of the house and the price of the house, right? You will just uh, create a little formula, and then you know, uh, and and also give the inputs, right? And the model will just apply this formula to these inputs, 
for example you just say you might, you might say that you know price of the house is 10 times the area of the house just randomly uh, don't take it not a scale and then uh, let's say the formula is 10 times of area price is equal to 10 times of area then maybe you given give a area like 10 and then the price of the house is 100 right 100 units so yeah you create a formula in this rules you just input the rules and then put this is rules by the way and then the computer will get you the outputs so very simple problem right input rules and output but you know you might not find the right rules right uh, for example uh, humans are not good experimentators and uh, humans are very good uh, very bad uh, bad at having patience in trying out things because um, like we have limited time and uh, uh, we, we, we can concentrate for a long time, right? So that is why we use computers. Computers are better, uh, better, better hard workers than human, uh, as you say, right? So therefore we'll use uh, computers to figure out these rules, hoping that they would, you know, come out with a better formula that can really, that can really find the relation between this uh, area of the house and price uh, of the house. So what I will do, I'll just build on, I'll just uh, design another system. This is also a computer, right? I'll just input the, some of the inputs, right? So let's say I have, you know, gone through some uh, members on the street, right? So uh, near my house, maybe I'll go through some people and uh, I'll ask him, you know, the area of the house and price of the house. I'll just collect, collect the area and price. Right. For example, let, let's say I, I have collected 10 areas and 10 prices of house Right. for, for 10 houses. Uh, I'll collect it and I'll input this to the computers. Uh, remember that there are outputs and inputs corresponding for the houses and we input and we input the model, both the inputs and the outputs, and then the model will figure out the rules or the formula or the relation, relation between these inputs and outputs. Or we are re really solving a very simple problem here. You know, we're just trying to, you know, get the relation between this inputs and the outputs. And yeah, that is, that is itself, uh, the function of neuron. So that, uh, that is what, uh, and a single neuron does. It will just find the relation between this inputs and this outputs. Remember the more the data that you give, the better these rules are, right? So the, let's say, you know, you want to teach a person about uh, images, the more the images you show, the better he'll get it, right? That is it. That is the difference between uh, AI and programming. Why why is AI better? Well, for a lot of different problems, we can put in the right, right rules and uh, that the rules may not be accurate. Number one. Number two, they can be really lengthy and uh, maybe there are another set of rules that are better and uh, as we are less patient, you know, we just want to automate different things, right? That is why we use uh, AI to write its own rules or formulas. Right. So section one completed. Uh, congrats. You came this far. And then now section two. Let's let's finish this as far as possible. Right. Section two. Types of deep learning. I just really. Let's see. All right. Uh, yeah. Section one finished. So let's get on to section two. So what is what does the section two say? The types of deep learning. Right. So yeah, let's learn about, yeah, uh, there are uh, further, there are two types of deep learning. Number one, second. Yeah, number one, supervised deep learning. Number two, unsupervised deep learning. Right, uh, I'm not going to write the whole spelling. It's going to take some time. So yeah, supervised deep learning. The example that I just showed you, house price prediction from area of the house, that is supervised deep learning, right? Unsupervised, uh, supervised deep learning, like when you have inputs and outputs, when you have both inputs and outputs, then you are looking at supervised learning problem. And almost every problem in the deep learning um, field is a, is a supervised learning algorithm, including generative modeling, even though if you need, you know, labels, I'll talk about generative modeling. I'll talk about language modeling in the future. So supervised learning is when you have both inputs and outputs, like you have to, you have want a model that can take in input and learn the relation between input and output and 
yeah if you want a model that can learn the relation between input and output supervised learning is the uh, place uh, is the model that you want to visit and then if you have just data only data and you want to find some patterns in this data by itself with, that does not have any labels then you go to unsupervised learning uh, tasks so unsupervised learning is um pretty uh, unsupervised learning is relatively less used compared to supervised learning so these are the two types of uh, deep learning like in supervised learning you have uh, for you have for example you have you know classification models you know generative models and all that so unsupervised learning includes you know for example you have uh, like a lot of data about customers and you want to classify customers or cluster customers uh, by their features then you use unsupervised learning in supervised learning you have inputs and outputs right so that's it and then uh, maybe in the next video, we'll look at further division in this supervised learning. There is a further division in this supervised learning. We'll learn that uh, in the next uh, next video, maybe. And then, uh, yeah, so now that we have learned the what is the difference between deep learning and programming and different type, types of deep learning, now let's look at the process of building a deep learning model. Let's try to break it one by one. So there, there are two different processes while building a model, while developing a model. There is a training process and there is a testing process. So as the name suggests, you can uh, you, you can even form your, uh, uh, form your understanding by just the name, right? There is training, there is testing. Uh, you will probably know what is training. Training is uh, the period where you learn, right? So, and then testing is the period where you test. So let's just right so as i told you there are uh, different models right but uh, we are going to talk about supervised learning of course so let's first say what happens in this training uh, let me just yeah let's see what happens in this training data so what is training so there is, let's say there is a model that takes in inputs takes in outputs so I'll, I'll show you the training process here. This is the model and predicts the rules. I think the better word for rules is parameters because uh, these rules are, are relations between inputs and outputs and they are sometimes, and they sometimes does not make sense, but produce uh, very good outputs. Like for example, uh, like, I'm not giving you examples, but you know, uh, the, the, the relations between these inputs and outputs is nothing but the rules, right? So these rules help you to go from this input to this output, or this rules gives you the formula to go from the input to the output. So these rules can change the input to the output, right? So in the training process, what will happen is we are going to update these rules such that the model can predict this output from the input and in the next section, in the next section, which is going to come in just, to, just few, just a few minutes, I'm going to tell what is going to happen, how this rules going to, uh, like, how do these rules, uh, convert this output input to the output, but just, uh, for now, just think that the, uh, the model produces rules and these rules are nothing but the parameters or the weights that can convert this inputs to the outputs. I hope that's good. Now, um, how the training process happens is the model will, you know, the model has rules, right? So let's say rules, the model has rules. It takes an input, you know, this, this happens in the training period, of course. So it predicts output, it takes inputs, predicts output and compare, let's just say this is O hat. Right, so O hat is the prediction and there's the actual O that is this, this O is the, uh, out actual output, uh, that, that, uh, the machine learning engineer gives the model and this O hat is the, uh, model prediction is the, this O hat is the prediction of the model and we'll compare both this O, o hat and O and based on, uh, the comparison will uh, change these rules, thus changing our O hat and bringing it closer or bringing O hat as close as possible to the actual O. So that's it. that is a training process and the testing process. Right after uh, after you know changing these uh, rules, 
such that this o hat is as close to o after uh, after you know changing these rules for a long time we'll get the we'll get to the testing period in which uh, we'll take these rules right or formula and this gives give it some inputs get some outputs o hat compare it with o and this time this inputs and this input wait a minute right so we'll take give the input and uh, come uh, get o hat and compare it with o output and in this time this inputs and outputs are uh, data that uh, the model have never seen before right so here you know uh, in the training period uh, we train the model on this data so therefore the model knows about the data in the testing period we input with new data and compare it with new data uh, based on the input of course so that is the testing and the training periods right so that is the difference between test training and test what happens a base, very basic uh, structure and now section 4 i don't think right so now let's go to section 4 which is the structure of a neuron so now we are getting a little leap, little leap into the easiest neural neural network of all time right so this is the easiest model that you can build uh, even even a, a high school student uh, like you can, you can you can just understand it very fastly right so there is a model so what uh, first let's see what is the neuron so for uh, now let's like neuron is just a function right it's just mathematical function that takes in the x so here uh, i'm going to use a notation as x is equal to input and y is equal to output right so we are going to just think of neuron as function of x and uh, you know I, I have told about rules here right so i have used the word rules uh, in the above section but from now on i'm going to use the word as weights right so you know let's just write a formula let's just write a basic formula basic uh, thing right so this is just a like our normal relation or normal um thing so yeah here are w1 w2 and b this is w by the way so w1 w2 and b are the weights or the rules or the parameters that are learned by the model that is uh, in the training loop in the training loop that i just uh, discussed above we are only going to change this w w1 w2 and b such that our output that is f of x f of x is equal to the model output f of x is essentially the output of uh, this function right so we want our model models output f of x to be as close as possible to actual output o so uh, we are going to change this w1 w2 and b so uh, here i have two input two inputs two input features that means for example uh, we we take in the area of the house and uh, let's say the um uh no, no, the, the population near the house right we'll take in both of these features and predict the uh, price of their house so very simple model here b is also a weight and uh, these are w1 w2 and b i'll just write it here just so you can remember w1 w2 b these are the weights or parameters that should be changed uh, while training because uh, these are w1 w2 and b are the only thing or, or the only uh, variables uh, yeah are the only values that we can, that, that we can change in the training loop and hopefully uh, we'll make we want to make our f ffx as close as to uh, o right so i'll just write goal goal f of x Uh, close to o. Uh, right so you just got the idea right now i could even write a function right so this is called a loss function in machine learning it's uh, in deep learning it used to it, it, this loss function is used to uh, get uh, is used to assess the performance of the model i mean that means determine how good or bad the model is performing right so I can just uh, create a loss function, right? I can just say f of x minus o whole squared, right? So this happens in a, at every training loop, right? So training loop, uh, training uh, while training, we uh, training means actually means you know looping or 
like if, if you if you go to any training like you you don't just uh, you don't just uh, learn learn yourself like one time right you don't just update your knowledge only once right you update it uh, many times such that uh, you you update your knowledge many times until you you know get to that um, uh, goal like how how good you are right so we just do this in the in every training loop we'll calculate this loss that is how good or bad the uh, formed rules are so this function you know indirectly checks how good or bad the rules are how good or bad the rules are the uh, formula is and then after that you know based on this loss i will try to optimize this w1 w2 and b so at every iteration we'll just uh, try to optimize w1 w2 and b right so how is this going to happen right uh, and and then we uh, look look out we are uh, squaring the terms because we don't want negative values because uh, let's say we overmine uh, w uh, o value so let's say the actual price was $100,000 and we over predict that as one $110,000 and then after, next time we uh, under predict as $90,000 then uh, both are going to cancel out each other which we don't want right so we are just, we are just querying it because we don't want negative values as loss so the loss defines how good the model is performing at every training loop right so at every training loop uh, when, whenever, whenever we are changing this w1 w2 and b every time we change this uh, parameters w1 w2 and b we are going to see how good or though how good or bad those changes are right really hope that you understood uh, that you understand what's going on here and now let's go to the steps of training right I, i've just covered it now i'll try to explain it a bit more what's going to happen i have just you know wrote some rules here right so these are the steps of training i just told i just uh, told you in just a minute but i'll repeat so first we get collect the data yes uh, inputs and outputs because my model wants to learn the relation between inputs and outputs right so we just collect the inputs and the outputs data and then for every input let's say this in, this is the inputs this is the outputs and we have like lot of data for for every input we have different output and what we make our model do is we'll try to like let's see let for for, for uh, like we have the f of x right f of x is nothing but i just wrote the formula here this is this is the formula right this is the formula of fx f of x right so we have w1 x1 like, like here uh, look out like the number of x1 here is equal to the number of w1 w here right so the number of x1 the, the number of x x is equal to the number of w's right so we are just uh, here also we are going to use the same formula but for first for first time we are go just going to take random numbers as weights so w1 w2 and b are going to be random numbers or probably zero and then you know we'll try to predict we'll try to predict some values for every input we'll try to predict some values in, the, in i'm just talking about the first iteration right so we'll predict the values and after that and after that what we'll do we'll calculate the loss right so we'll use the function that i have just wrote above and we are going to subtract this f of x from o to see how good how near the predictions are to the actual output understand so we are this is x right so i i i is nothing but x so don't confuse so we'll taking this input is this x to the f of x function we'll try to generate an output for every input and then we'll we are going to compare every output every model prediction to the actual output right so we are just going to compare after comparing we'll try to get a loss function and after that we'll optimize our model optimize the parameters means we'll change the internal w1 w2 etc right so we are going to change this w1 w2 and then after that we'll repeat the same steps right after uh, yeah after uh, changing this values we'll, we will will again predict on this uh, i we just take in this x and after changing this w1 w2 and b we are going to predict on this input data again and hopefully you know get closer to this actual output values so yeah that is the training process how the training actually happens 
I, I really hope that you under, get uh, understand here you know like i know that uh, like just just stay just like uh, b- b- before an hour you know i recorded it in, i recorded it in a, like an op- online website but uh unluckily unfortunately the recording did happen so this is my second time recording it recording the video so yeah i i mean i, I really hope that you can understand everything what's going on here like deep learning is like you, you neuron like you, i want i just want you to read, read some articles and uh, articles in deep learning i don't want you to you, know, you don't have to like read like research papers you just go go basic you just uh, read some papers and what Uh, what are the works that are happening in deep learning so that you can understand the concepts better so now next next up uh, optimization yes i mean i just told you that we'll up- upgrade update w1w that is a major problem and uh, but i'll try to up- uh, cover optimization in the next video because you know it's a huge tra- huge huge topic like there there is a lot of calculus that you have to learn but i'll try to cover as much as possible as much that is required but i definitely do recommend you know you check out this good series right so this good series it's a very good series on how you can optimize values of a function such that you know you, you either reach the top you, you either reach the top or uh, the least of a function so i'll just you know uh, get you a diagram such that you can understand there is a very good diagram that helped me uh like two years back that helped me to learn about uh optimization just just like what is optimization what is what it is actually doing what is the goal uh, of optimization deep learning right so he, i just i just have a very good diagram here uh or else right here are uh, w is the weights and g of w is the loss right so actually loss is actually uh, noted as a j in many uh, courses right so j of w is the loss here and w is the law w is the weights and uh, we are going to change this weight here there is only one weight see because uh, we, we can visualize you know multi uh, like three dimensional four dimensional values right so uh, here for for, sim- for simplicity for simplicity cases we are going to use only one weight that there that is there are, there is only one weight and one input so we are we are going to change this weight we are going to change it weight such that we reach below of this loss function so this is the called the global minimum that is the ideal weight or the ideal loss function or the ideal loss value that you want right so the goal of deep learning models the goal of neuron is to get as less loss as possible so we'll try to update this weight such that we we reach this lowest point in this loss curve so that is actually what we, what is going to happen so at every step we are going to compute compute the slope of the of the, we are going to compute this slope of this function with respect to w that is how this of w is affecting the loss function we are going to calculate that calculate that and then we are going to converge to the loss so here this the ball represent w let's right? so this ball represents uh, the value of w and the cost function uh, here uh, x axis represent w y axis represent loss and we want to get to the lowest loss as possible that is it guys uh, and remember intuition is always better than compute computation you don't want to you know learn about computation uh, sadly that's what the teachers in school uh, Uh, right so intuition is always better than computation like whatever technology you go through the better thing is to learn what it does underneath what does it mean not not just learning about formulas and um uh and and and, and solving uh, mathematical problems it's all about learning about what's happening under 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 the hood like mathematics is a very huge field very beautiful field and i really want you to enjoy the beauty right so just uh go through the series i'll just put it in the link in the description so thank you for watching and uh, yeah see you in the next video